Hi, today I will show you how to quickly install the K3S on a CM4 I board and then we will proceed with engines installation so I will be able to explain why we are doing it and that's how I'm going to perform this tutorial. I mean I will show you step by step instruction how to do it properly. So first of all what we need to do um because I already removed all the configuration so um we are going to install everything from the scratch so um we need to just disable the traffic and uh, service load balancer so we will do this as always the url and install k3s exact and right keep config mode fit for core and disable traffic and service load balancer so here we go, we are going to do this. And after that, also remember about boot command line.txt file. So um to add C group enable memory and C group memory one. Um I'm going to present this in a moment because we have to wait a little bit for K3S. So um this is very important. And after that you have to just reboot the server so um we are going to do this cat boot cmd line.txt and you can see i have c group memory equals one and c group enable me equals memory added so um you have to add it to this file um and reboot the machine okay so this is what we need to do and after the reboot uh we have to install the nginx um just because uh, it's an ingress and what actually is um uh ingress controller um ingress controller uh is something that replaces the traffic uh and this is uh something very important to uh understand how it is working so let's um explain this step by step what it is um first of all i will try to provide you some website and you will be able to see what we are talking about so let's switch to the browser and here there is an explanation what actually nginx controller is and how it works so um what is an ingress controller um it's a component uh, in a kubernetes cluster that configures an http load balancer because we removed the traffic actually we didn't install it so we need a load balancer uh and the, the ingress controller the nginx controller configures uh, a HTTP load balancer according to ingress resources created by the cluster user. And there is also an explanation how uh, ingress controller at a high level works out. So there is uh, information, uh, client A, client B, so it goes to public endpoint, then you have the ingress, uh, ingress controller here. And let's say, um, usually kubernetes is working the way that we have a master server master node and some workers like uh, a workers node and let's imagine the situation that we have our uh, two data centers physically for example one is in um germany and the second one is uh, in united kingdom right and so we have uh site a and site b and we can have workers in the data center in United Kingdom and in Germany. And the load balancer works the way that um, it takes the traffic and it balances it between those two locations. And usually, it is working the way that the load balancer is working the way that we have the identical configuration in each location. So there, if there is a huge traffic, um, this is the very basic explanation. So um, it can direct 
uh, some kind some traffic to uh, site A and to site B. This is how it is working. So, and on our nodes and our workers, well, we can we have ports, both A, both B. So both A are on site A on a node worker in, for example, United Kingdom. This is a site A and site B is in Germany. So we have both B on a worker node B located in Germany. And this is how everything is working. Uh, you can read about this more, uh, how everything is configured and how exactly the Nginx is working, but I'm not going to focus on this thing, just because you have the information here, so you can just read it. And there is also an installation guide. Um, and in our case, we have to scroll down to the bar metal section and click it. And here we have a command, so we can just click here on this icon, copy to clipboard, and just go back to our command line and just paste this command into the uh, into the why oh, it doesn't work for some reason. Okay, we'll try to get into this one more time. We go and just import, insert the command, and it should install the nginx. So if we will now cube ctl get nodes done should show the node once it's ready and get posts to show all name spaces um we can see we have an ingress nginx working but there is a problem just because um the ingress controller current has no entry point um to it so we have to create a load balancer to expose the ingress ports so I already created a file that uh, is located in my home directory. So I will show you on um, Vim ingress controller. And you have put the content of this file, uh, put all of this into this file to have inside of this. And after that, what you need to do, um, you need to just apply the load balancer file so kubectl apply uh, just like that dash f ingress controller and it should create load now we need to create a namespace test and i'm to create then a test application so cube ETL create namespace test and it should create. Okay, now we need uh, my example yam so file and here we have our test nginx application and you can see namespace is test so test nginx backend so and we are using uh, nginx alpine docker image with nginx uh, installed on the um, alpine and there is a host so we can change the name here and i don't know um we can use something like test local host it should work this way and i just uh copied it from the internet i found the test application how it should work and how it should look like um so i was looking some something that is just working for a uh, um testing purpose and you can see there is ssl redire set as false so i'm going to explain it in a moment why it is done this way um just uh you have to understand one thing thing um 
the SSL redirect is set to false because um, by default, the SSL will be used and write an error for missing certificate. This is how it is working by default. So we are removing the SSL error uh, by setting SSL redirect to false. And you have to then just change the domain name as I did. And then you need to um, apply the file. So um, what we have to do actually, um, we need to apply this file to Kubernetes. So we are going to do some simple thing. Cube ETL apply. Now dash app and now my example, but we need to set also the namespace for the uh, namespace for this example. So it will be test because I already created a name a namespace test. And you should see it's created and uh, the application actually is created. Lovely. So now um we need to test everything. So First of all, we will check the uh, cube CTL, the cluster info, cluster dash info, and it should install. Yeah, and you can see Kubernetes control plane is running at local host, so um, we can get into it by creating a tunnel and redirect the traffic, and then go into the browser uh, local host um, and and the uh, 6443, but uh, I will present it later in a separate video. Okay, so now kubectl get nodes, then yeah, get pods and in all namespaces, and you can see that it's up and running, lovely. And you can also check the config get context, so kubectl config and get context uh, we should see the default contact is set and we need to also check all namespaces so cube ctl and get all and all namespaces because we need to see all the namespaces that are working here so we have everything here located and also um there is one thing that is worth to mention um we can manage the k3s um cluster to the k9s and how we can do this first of all what we need to do we need to just copy the k3s dot yam file to the cube config file because k9s is reading from the cube config here we go and okay oh there we go okay that was something was hanging and okay we did it and now if we will display this cube config like that it's located in my directory, and if you will do this, so L like that, and uh, L. Ah, okay, so it shows you the location and, of course, who the root is. Uh, the root is own an owner. Um, but I think the best option would be to turn um recursively um Adrian. Adrian, uh, like that. Ah, I need to check by the Adrian. Um, users, Adrian, git emat, yeah, it should be shown to do. Shown recursively, Adrian, Adrian, the home Adrian. Ah, work like that. And now, and it is working correctly. So now we need to understand how the K9S is working. So first of all, we are installing it and it's taking the configuration from the directory.cube uh, 
and from the file config uh, from this. And now, if I will run k9x just like that, it should show you all the ports that are running. And you can, of course, um, quit by Control C, and k9s info will show you the information and help will display the information how you can use it um and you can refresh uh you can uh launch k9 as in all namespaces and like for example if we you we do this it will run like that and it will run all the nam namespaces and you can see CPU, memory usage, K9S, K data revision flow, everything is working as expected. And you can delete, edit, and kill, attach, etc. So you can do a lot of things here. And okay, so this is something that I wanted to present that we can use K9S. So now it is interesting. So how to actually um do some things i will just use the history grab you yeah and get all namespaces and we will use this and it show you everything like this but get all namespace that And you can see see everything is working like that, and all the ports namespace and everything is working. But if all okay, excellent. And we'll check the history. White also you can use this one and. Will display you the all the information that are needed to um check the configuration. So you can see we have a test nginx service, and it is running on a port eighty TCP. So we can check if it's actually working. So um url dot, and we can use HTTP on ten dot thirty. 40, 43.13.55 and it should show you the information that Nginx on this Alpine Docker image is working. And if you see this page, the Nginx web server is accessibly installed. So our application, our test Nginx service is working as expected. So um everything is working as expected. And after that, you will be able to do this um one by one. You can remove all the ports um, that are unnecessary for you, all the namespaces, all the services, and etc. etc. So this is how we can do everything. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Take care. Bye bye.